The first sin that came upon this earth was appetite. Always chewing. The first test that came to Daniel was appetite. Food. The first test that came to Jesus Christ in the desert, Matthew 4, appetite. You know, so appetite, people, appetite is destroying many people's lives, if you didn't know that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back again. Don't forget to like, subscribe down below on both my Facebook Oh, well, you actually, you just follow on my Facebook page. And I'm going to put it down there. And also like and subscribe into this channel on my YouTube channel as well. Mario Michel here. Today's topic, uh, part three of the chapter entitled A Healthy Normality. I almost forgot it already. Chapter 6. And I'm gonna assume we might go up to 5 parts or 6 parts as well on this one. Yeah, those chapters are kinda long. But by God's grace, we're gonna get right there. So, let's get right into the topic. Body, mind, heart, and under God's control. So, body, mind, and heart under God's control. He who truly loves and fears God, striving with a singleness of purpose to do His will, will place his body, mind, and his heart, his soul, his strength under service to God. So, body, mind, heart, soul, strength. Thus it was with Enoch, now, if you don't know who Enoch was, go to the book of Genesis and you're going to know about him. He walked with God. Basically means he had a close relationship with God. Those who are determined to make the will of God their own must serve and please God in everything. Then the character will be harmonious and well-balanced, consistent, cheerful, and true. And I would substitute that word cheerful for the word gay. The true meaning of the word gay. Cheerful. Not the perverted one that people now use now. No, not that one. Later, 128, 1897. So, we we need to give control to God. We need to give the our body, our mind, our heart, our soul, our strength. Now, when you hear the word soul, it's not that you have something inside of you that comes out. The soul is you. You are the soul. Okay, you are the soul, basically. The soul is body plus spirit. You are the soul. So, don't think that you have something coming out like in those satanic movies. No, no. You are the soul. Ezekiel chapter 18 tells you that already. And the book of Genesis chapter 1 also tells you that. Verse 26 to verse 30. So, you are the soul. Just don't forget that part. Let's keep on going. Faculties of mind that to rule the body. I'm going to try to make it go down. Oh, that's too fast. Let's do this. True education includes the whole being. It teaches the right use of oneself. It, it enables us to make the best use of brain, bone, and muscle of body, mind, and heart. The faculties of the mind as the higher power pa has the as the higher powers are to rule the kingdom of the body, the natural appetites and passions are to be brought under the control of the conscience, the conscience, and the spiritual affections. So, 
Hold on. Hold on. Christ stands at the head of humanity, and it is his purpose to lead us in his service into high and holy paths of purity. By the wondrous working of his grace, we are to be made complete in him. Ministry of Healing, page 398 and page 399. Yes! So, um... Appetite. People that have a hard time to not be chewing on food. The first sin that came upon this earth was appetite. Always chewing. The first test that came to Daniel was appetite. Food. The first test that came to Jesus Christ in the desert. Matthew 4, appetite. You know, so, appetite, people, appetite is destroying many people's lives, if you didn't know that. It is destroying people's lives, appetite. So, we need to take that and bring it down on the conscience. Don't let your appetite rule you, but let your mind rule. But, not everyone likes that idea because they like to have everything that they want. So, but, let's keep going. Well developed minds and broad characters. God's workmen must labor to be many sided men, that is to have a breadth of character, not to be one idea men, stereotype in one manner of working, getting into a groove, and unable to see and sense that their words and their advocacy of truth must vary with the class of people they are among in the circumstances that they have to meet. That was a long sentence. All should be constantly seeking for well-developed minds and to overcome ill-balanced characters. This must be your constant study if you make a useful, successful laborer. This must be your constant study if you make a useful, successful laborer. Letter 12, 1887. You know what that means. Okay. Let's move on. Commonplace. Trivial matters, matters dwarf, dwarf the mind. Upon the mind of every student should be impressed the thought that education is a failure unless the understanding has learned the, to grasp the truth of divine revelation and unless the heart accepts the teachings of the gospel of Christ. The student who, in the place of the broad principles of the word of God, will accept common ideas and will allow the time and attention to be absorbed in commonplace, trivial matters, will find his mind becoming dwarfed and enfeebled. He has lost the power of growth. The mind must be trained to comprehend the important truth that concerns eternal life. Review and Herald, November 11, 1909. And this is what I don't like about schools nowadays. I'm going to take a moment to pause for like maybe 10 seconds.
Okay. What I don't like about schools nowadays is they don't want anyone to be talking about Bible. That's fair. Okay. Fine. But they are pushing their theology of evolution. That is hypocrisy. So you are trying to teach young people to believe in a religion as evolution, but you don't want them to have the chance to either to also learn about the Bible. That's hypocrisy. At least make it fair that they can choose whether they want to believe, whether they want, they want to study the Bible or evolution. But they are pushing religion out of school, and they are pushing and they are shoveling, um, shoveling down in your throat the religion, of, the religion of evolution, and that is disgusting. At least to me. If you wanna do it, do it fair. Make it equally accessible into the school, both the Bible and the evolution that you wanna teach. And let the kids decide what they want to believe in. But they are basically pushing evolution into you at a young age. So, yeah. Even in elementary school, they are teaching young kids that already. So, don't be surprised. But the good thing is, when I get to teach those young kids, and they are talking about evolution, I start asking them questions so they can start thinking, not just believing anything that they've been told. Moving on, moving on, minds not to be crowded with useless things. Evolution is a useless thing. I feel like that part actually. Maybe I should have said, Mind, maybe you should have said, mind not to be crowded with evolution. I think that's actually a better term, useless things. <laughs> you get the point. Education, as it is conducted in the schools of today, that was in 1897, over a hundred years ago, is one-sided and therefore a mistake. Hold on, Mario. Mario. Did you just say that it would be fair to have both evolution and the Bible being taught in the school? Did you just did you just say that? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Is that what they just said in the next uh, the next paragraph? You have it read it? I just read it. It says exactly what you just said. Take a look. Okay. Education as it is conducted in the schools of today, 1897, is one-sided and therefore a mistake. Oh, I just said that earlier. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, you know what? Let me actually read that part because it's pretty interesting. Let, let, let me just continue. As the purpose of the Son of God, oh, my bad, as the purchase of the Son of God, we are His property, and everyone should have an education in the school of Christ. Wise teachers should be chosen for our schools, but that's not the case anymore. Teachers have to deal with human minds and they are responsible to God to impress upon those minds the necessity of knowing Christ as a personal Savior. But this is not what's being taught in schools anymore from elementary in the cradle. But no one can truly educate God's purchased possessions unless he himself has learned in the school of Christ how to teach. I must tell you from the light given me by God 
I know that much time and money are spent by students in acquiring a knowledge that is as chaff to them, basically on the threshing floor, and the wind and the wind comes and just blows it away. For it does not enable them to help their fellow men to form characters that will fit them to unite with saints and angels in the higher school. In the place of crowding youthful minds with the mass of things that are distasteful and that is that in many cases will never be of any use to them, like evolution, a practical education should be given. Time and money are spent in gaining useless knowledge. The mind should be carefully and wisely taught to dwell upon Bible truth. The main object of education should be to gain a knowledge of how we can glorify God, whose we are by creation and by redemption. The result of education should be to enable us to understand the voice of God. Let's keep on reading. Like the branches of the true vine, the word of God represents unity and diversity. Not uniformity. No. Not unity in uniformity. It's unity in diversity. Not uniformity like the Pope is asking right now to do. Let's all lay aside our doctrines and let's come together. Yeah, that's very deceptive to me. Like what Satan would actually say. You have to catch on those things too sometimes. Okay. There is in, in, there is in it a perfect superhuman mysterious unity it contains divine wisdom and that is the foundation of all true education but this book oh this book i think i just said that earlier right that they are trying to push out the bible out of the school has been treated indifferently. And I have a story for you after I'm done with this one because we're gonna be we're gonna finish after with this paragraph. Now, as never before, we need to understand the true science of education. If we fail to understand this, we shall never have a place in the kingdom of God. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John 17, verse, verse 3. If this is the price of heaven, shall not our education be conducted on these lines? The Christian Educator, August 1st, 1897. Now, okay, let's see. I was taking a physics class, and the professor is bright. I mean, I have to give credit, he's really smart. But you know, when you are a Christian, a Bible-believing Christian, and you don't just accept any trash from people, I'm that kind of person. He's teaching the class perfectly and he's going smoothly until he said, but you know, when the Big Bang happened and, and this and this and this, and I was like, hold on, is this not a science class? Why is he preaching now to me? Did you get the point? So I raised my hand and I said, Question for you, sir. When did the Big Bang happen? Because I never heard of such a thing as Big Bang happening and that caused the universe to create like that. When did it happen? Well, of course he couldn't answer that question because he doesn't know the answer for it. Because there is no Big Bang anyways. Unless you believe that you were a chimpanzee, I mean, I mean, I guess you were, because I was not. I was made a human being. Unless you believe that you were a chimpanzee, and then for some reason, you started to evolve. But then for some reason, the other, the other chimpanzee are not evolving anymore. Yeah. Oh, we had a long argument in the classroom. In the classroom, I was like, I am not, I, I, I told him, this is science, but now you're bringing religion. 
But did I actually say that? I fuck if I actually said that. But I knew that this was no longer science. This was religion. Because it's a belief. It's not proven. That's why they call it the Big Bang Theory. Not Big Bang Theorem or Big Bang Axiom or Big Bang Proof. It's theory. So to all of you out there that still believe in this nonsense, I'm going to call it nonsense, useless thing called evolution, please, you can believe that. But don't try to push it on people. What you should do is give people those two things, the Bible and evolution, and let them choose for themselves. You can see that God never forces people to believe in himself, but Satan does force people to believe in him. Because if Satan comes truly as who he is, no one will sign up with him. Actually, no, I'm lying. Some actually really do start with Satan, but the majority would not. And that's why he comes in disguise. And evolution is a perfect disguise that Satan uses to attract people to himself. And funny thing is, there is no atheist out there, okay? People are, in, are agnostic. There is no athe atheist. Because you can't say God is anything because you don't know for sure. So yeah, that's just nonsense as well. Anyways, guys. This was Mario Michel again. Don't forget to like, subscribe down below on both my Facebook. Oh, well, you actually you just follow on my Facebook page, and I'm gonna put it down there. And also like and subscribe into this channel on my YouTube channel as well. All right. So, what? Well, yeah, I will see you guys again. I will see you guys again. I hope to see you guys again actually. But if I don't see you guys again, I hope to see you guys when Jesus Christ comes the second time. Of course, in heaven. Until then, bye for now. Mario out.